in the United States, most restaurants have to pay to dispose of the oil. And so it is very easy to talk to your neighborhood restaurant, and they're very happy to give it to you for free. You have a little work involved in cleaning it up, but if you pick a good restaurant that has inherently clean oil, the problems are, are almost non-existent. In the United States, there are over, uh, there's about 16 billion liters of waste vegetable oil produced annually. Over half of that does not even make it into a recycling system. So we have a huge potential right now to access just the waste oil. Everybody knows the stereotypical American who eats fried food, and unfortunately it's true. And uh, so we have a tremendous amount of waste vegetable oil uh, available to us. And so as uh, our German brothers are concentrating on new oil, we are actually still in the stages of recycling the old oil. It's my hope that we will be able to use that and then at some point in the future uh, start growing new oil for that use instead of relying so much on petroleum. Uh, this is uh, one of the units that we, we developed. We call it the one shot. With this uh, small unit, it's a pump and filter unit, we are able to go on the road and travel across the country and stop at uh, any restaurant and gather oil directly from the restaurant's waste container into our vehicle. This filter uh, is uh, very fine. It's about a two micron filter and it has water blocking capabilities. And so if there, it's important that you make sure that the oil is inherently clean and dry, but any trace amounts of moisture will be taken out by this filter. And so this allows us to take road trips and with the family and take vacations and have fuel sources at many restaurants across the country. Uh, some of the uh, changes that are coming is that there's actually been uh, some legislation recently that has been positive uh, for the plant oils. Uh, in the past, we have been considered uh, such a small group that they have pretty much ignored us. Uh, some people uh, have tried to go to the government and ask, uh, where do I pay the taxes? And sometimes they accept the money, but depending on what state you're in, sometimes they tell them, we don't know what to charge you, so just go away. We don't care. And so, for the most part, everybody is, uh, has the freedom to do this. Recently, uh, there have been two instances in two different states, North Carolina and uh, Illinois, where a government taxing agency tried to penalize somebody for running uh, waste oil from the restaurant, and very shortly uh, the legislature reversed that ruling, and there was new legislation introduced to give an exemption. Uh, we were instrumental uh, in Arkansas this last year. I was able to help write some legislation le legislation to where we got a, a blanket exemption uh, from the state of Arkansas. They redefined uh, a motor fuel and specifically exempted uh, pure plant oil and waste vegetable oil gathered from restaurants. And so effectively they're saying, there's no regulation, no taxes, do what you will. And I think this is an extremely important trend because we all know that we need to do something different than petroleum in this uh, this fosters people to experiment and to find better ways. Uh, we've uh, been able to con convert uh, and work on quite a few different uh, vehicles. This uh, center middle picture are all of the diesels that I own, uh, starting from my small ATV all the way up to my uh, big tour bus. But we can uh, pretty much convert anything out there. We've, we've converted uh, you know, more varied types of diesels than uh, most people, I think, and, and some of the experience has been very valuable. Uh, one thing that, uh, a real success that we had uh, last year is that we teamed up with General Motors and were, uh, actually went on a cross-country tour called the Go Green Tour. That vehicle burned ethanol. And then this uh, custom truck, we converted to run on pure plant oil. We used no petroleum and we went from California to New York and back on pure plant oil. And we had uh, many media events that were hosted at General Motors dealerships 
and it was a very good opportunity for us to uh, have a discussion with a large automobile company. Now, they're still not very happy about plant oil. They're, they're a little bit uh, hesitant, but we were at least able to prove to them that we could take their equipment and we could successfully run on plant oil. And so it was a very, uh, very good success. Uh, well, we'll skip this one. Uh, one of the new uh, things that we are starting to work with, with the newer uh, diesels uh, that are computer controlled, is we uh, have actually gone in, we've gone in and have been able to uh, remap some of the fuel systems, and we are able to optimize the performance uh, of these engines with computer controls to work more efficiently with plant oil. It doesn't take away from their ability to, to uh, work with diesel, but uh, this is a, a, some breakthrough technology that we have that uh, by altering the injection timing and the injection sequence, we're actually able to harness some of the benefits of using pure plant oil. Okay, it's getting late, so we'll, we'll hurry this up a little bit. My full text is in the book, so you can read it later. I'll, I'll cut it short here. Um, when I was a young man, I spent uh, quite a few years in Japan and learned to speak Japanese fluently. And from my contacts there, after I started my company in the United States, I was talking to some of my friends over there, and uh, I started to realize that this was a perfect opportunity to broaden our market and to to help our Japanese brothers, uh, some of the points are that they live on an island. All They have very little natural resources, so everything has to be shipped into their island, and then all waste products have to be shipped out. And so they have quite an a expensive waste oil disposal problem, and unlike the United States, they have many, many diesel vehicles, just like here in Germany. And so as I started to talk to uh, my contacts over there, we decided that this would be the next area that we would develop our market in. So we have been able to uh, make some pretty great inroads uh, in Japan. Uh, an interesting story real quick. Uh, after uh, we decided we were going to convert some vehicles in Japan, uh, I decided that I was going to fly over there and, and teach uh, some of my colleagues uh, how to work with the engines, and so I, I packed all my equipment in uh, three big boxes, and I took them on the airplane with me, and uh, as I'm going through customs in Japan, they open the boxes, and they see all these hoses and wires and all these strange parts, and they look at me kind of strange. And, they, uh, and of course, this was after uh, the terrorist attack on 9-11, so everybody's pretty nervous. And here they see these boxes with all these hoses and wires, and they, they uh, asked me in uh, broken English, they said, uh, you know, what is this stuff? And, and so I answered back in Japanese and explained to them that this was so I could take a restaurant grease uh, from the fryer and we could run a vehicle on it. And you could tell it just went right over their heads. Their eye, they, they didn't understand, but they, I think they suspected that it was such a strange answer that it must be true, so they let me go through. <laughs> so, uh, some of the, the early challenges uh, were for myself that I had to learn some of the technical terms in Japanese language and uh, train some of the mechanics over there so that when I wasn't there, they could uh, have success in installing our products. Uh, but that uh, soon came, and one of the great successes that we were able to have is that we have a 100% blanket exemption from the Japanese government for burning plant oil fuels. And so we are free to experiment and to use waste vegetable oil and new vegetable oil 100% tax-free. So it's a real uh, benefit over there, and, and they are really leading the way in showing how committed they are to renewable fuels. Uh, 